to spend a little time talking about Beljansky's discovery of a plant extract with antiviral effects. This is Pau Pereira. It's a, a tree that grows in the Amazon rainforest. Uh, the bark is harvested, extracted, and a preparation is made from this extracted material that can be taken orally by humans and has been shown to have antiviral, as well as it's better known for anti-cancer effect. Note that the active compound in the extract is a molecule known as flavoparine, which is pictured there below the picture of the tree. Also wanna add that this uh, harvesting of the bark uh, is not killing the tree. Uh, the bark can regrow, so the life of the tree is sustained. Well, I'm gonna briefly summarize antiviral effect of Pauperera extract against RNA uh, uh, viruses. The, this is where most of Beljansky's research was directed. RNA viruses were the ones that he focused on to check the activity the anti-cancer, I'm sorry, antiviral activity of Paul Pereira. So laboratory experiments, and in the case of HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, have demonstrated activity of Paul Pereira extract against these viruses. Tobacco mosaic virus, it's a plant virus, and uh, these experiments are very nice. They're very clear cut. If you cover the, a leaf with a virus, TMV, and then treat half with a pauperera extract and leave the other half untreated. The untreated part develops these uh, uh, blemishes that are the sign of TMV and the other side that's treated with pauperera is protected, it's still a green leaf. The influenza virus, uh, influenza virus pauperera has also been shown to have activity there. Uh, and then most uh, important, the HIV human immunodeficiency virus. Uh, this is a, a study that was conducted in a human clinical trial. And there is a publication, which I want to just show you the front page of, because this really was successful and there were significant endpoints here. So the people in this trial, the individuals, were HIV positive. So they had been infected with the virus, HIV, but uh, they did not have full-blown AIDS. And in the course of a 12-month study, none of them progressed to full-blown AIDS. None of them succumbed to secondary infections. And then there were some endpoints of real significance here. The CD4 cells, which are the immune cells that the virus infects, those numbers came back up under the influence of Paul Pereira the total uh, lymphocyte counts came back and there were several other positive developments. Uh, again, without negative side effects, in the course of a year, uh, the safety of the Pauperera extract was established. Well, there are, have been now recent testimonials indicating activity of Pauperera extract against COVID-19 infections. Now, remind you that COVID-19 is an RNA virus uh, I think it, it's in line to be looked at next. And we have first seen interesting reports from doctors, two doctors, that have described successful treatments of their COVID-19 patients with Pauperera extract. And also several individuals have come forward and provided reports of effective use. So two factors help make these testimonials credible. Rapid resolution of all the symptoms and success with telltale symptoms of COVID-19 infections, such as loss of smell or taste. Uh, these anecdotes are provocative, but are not proof of antiviral action. And our first step is to get more data from these types of uh, anecdotal, but uh, personal testimonials. So we're attempting to gather more detailed information on the use of the POW extract in COVID-19 cases. And depending on what we find out, we can then uh, set up a more formal study uh, to, to look at this effect and make it a, a scientific uh, uh, study that is uh, convincing. Then I just want to close by making a note on the possible mechanism of Powell's antiviral effect. How is it happening? The fact that flav flavoperine, the active compound of the extract, binds to destabilized DNA cancer cells was established in Beljansky's Onco test. And this has been seen also in cell-based studies would show that that molecule binds specifically 
to the destabilized or damaged DNA characteristic of cancer cells. And the end result is to kill the cancer cell, but there's no binding to healthy cells. So DNA binding is well established here. This was also seen, there are some studies of microscopic studies like microscopy and infrared, uh, I'm sorry, UV, ultraviolet, binding of flavoparine to DNA was confirmed in microscopic studies of cancer cells, showing localization of the molecules in the nucleus, which contains the DNA. These studies also indicated that flavoparine can bind to RNA as the molecule localizes to the nucleolus, a compartment in the nucleus that is rich in RNA. Laboratory experiments confirmed the RNA binding. So our hypothesis for the mechanism of antiviral effect is that flavoparine binding to the viral RNA genome blocks viral RNA polymerase from synthesizing new copies of the genome and thereby prevents assembly of new viruses. Binding affinity to the RNA genome is determined by several factors, including its sequence, its purine pyrimidine content, and its secondary structure. So this is a, a, a point where we can see the antiviral and anti-cancer effects uh, come together into focus because they may both, we know in case of cancer, it's by binding of the flavoparine to the cancer cell DNA. And we think now that uh, binding of the flavoparine to the uh, potentially destabilized RNA genomes could be the mechanism of action for pre preventing uh, replication of the viral genome.